know what to say. Singing in church? So that was your, well, first of all, Happy Easter. Ah, it's so wonderful to have you all here today in person. Uh, It's been two years since we've been able to do anything like this. Uh, And it's incredible, right? It's so great that you all are here. So thank you for coming. Uh, That, what you just listened to, was your St. Barnabas Episcopal Church virtual choir. Uh, We spent the last, was it a week or two weeks, recording that. However long it's been. Um, There are uh, a a few people here today who uh, uh, were in that. Andrea was in there. Nancy was in there. I I was in there. Uh, Is there anyone else? Am I missing anyone? Libby was in there back there. And Pat. Pat was in there. Uh, So say thank you to those folks, if you would, today for giving us the gift of uh, song in church. uh, Because that was really wonderful. Um, I'd like to do that at least once a month. So if you would like to be a part of the St. Barnabas Episcopal Church Virtual Choir, uh, please do let me know. And uh, even if you are not tech savvy at all, it's okay. You can come here and we can record you here. And uh, yeah, there's a video of that on our uh, uh, YouTube and on our Facebook. So you can go home and watch it and see everyone wave in their little, their little boxes like they're in Hollywood Squares or whatever. Um, anyway. Yeah, so our service today begins on page 355 in your Book of Common Prayer. And it has been a long time coming, so I am hoping we get to do this with gusto. Hallelujah! Christ is risen! (laughs) Almighty God, to you all hearts are open. All desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please say with me the Gloria, found on page 356. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, Heavenly King, God, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer, for you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, to the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O God, who for our redemption gave your only begotten Son to the death of the cross, and by his glorious resurrection delivered us from the power of our enemies, Grant us so to die daily to sin, that we may evermore live with him in the joy of his resurrection. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for the readings. The first reading, a reading from the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 10, verses 34 to 43. Peter began to speak to Cornelius and the other Gentiles. I truly understand that God shows no partiality, but in every nation, Anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. You know the message he sent to the people of Israel, 
preaching peace by Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. That message spread through Judea, beginning in Galilee after the baptism that John announced. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power. How he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We are witnesses to all that he did, both in Judea and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree, but God raised him on the third day and allowed him appear, not to all the people, but to us who were chosen by God as witnesses and who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one ordained by God as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him, that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our psalm for today is Psalm 118, verses 1 and 2, and verses 14 to 24, on pages 760 through 762 of the Book of Common Prayer. Let us read responsibly. I'll start, you finish. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. Let Israel now proclaim. The Lord is my strength and my song, and he has become my salvation. There is a sound of exultation and victory in the tents of the righteous. The right hand of the Lord has triumphed. The right hand of the Lord is exalted. The right hand of the Lord has triumphed. I shall not die but live and declare the works of the Lord. The Lord has punished me sorely, but he did not hand me over to death. Open for me the gates of righteousness. I will offer thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord. I will give thanks to you, for you answered me and have become my salvation. The same stone which the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. This is the Lord's doing. Marvelous in our eyes. On this day, the Lord has acted. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from the first letter of Paul to the Corinthians, chapter 15, verses 1 to 11. Now I would remind you, brothers and sisters, of the good news that I proclaimed to you, which you in turn received, in which also you stand, through which also you are being saved, if you hold firmly to the message that I proclaim to you, unless you have be begun to believe in vain. For I handed on to you as of first importance what I in turn have received, that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he was raised on the third day 
in accordance with the scriptures, and that he appeared to Cephas, and then to the twelve. Then he appeared to more than 500 brothers and sisters at one time. Most of them are still alive, though some have died. Then he appeared to James, then to all the apostles. Last of all, as to one untimely born, he appeared also to me. For I am the least of the apostles, unfit to be called an apostle, because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God, I am what I am. And his grace toward me has not been in vain. On the contrary, I worked harder than any of them, though it was not I, <clears throat> but the grace of God that is with me. Whether then it was I or they, so we proclaim and so you have come to believe. The word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, according to Mark. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James, and Salome brought, bought spices so that they might go and anoint him. And very early on the first day of the week, when the sun had risen, they went to the tomb. They had been saying to one another, who will roll away the stone for us from the entrance to the tomb? When they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had already been rolled back. As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in a white robe, sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. But he said to them, Do not be alarmed, for you are looking for Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He has been raised. He is not here. Look, there is the place they laid him. But go, tell his disciples and Peter that he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him, just as he told you. So they went out and fled from the tomb, for terror and amazement had seized them. And they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. And all that they uh, had been commanded them, they told briefly to those around Peter. And afterward, Jesus himself sent out through them from east to west the sacred and imperishable proclamation of eternal salvation. The Gospel of the Lord.
Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. So first of all, I just wanted to say, again, welcome, and I'm so glad you're here. Uh, if you were here for Monday, Thursday, or Good Friday, you learned that uh, I am a bit of a church nerd. Uh, I love all things church. Um, I love the, the liturgical toys. I love the prayers. I, I love the, the vestments. I love it all. Uh, and, and so that's why I'm, I'm kind of going all out. I'm wearing my Beretta, which is the hat that I had on. Fun story about that. Uh, a Beretta, the hat, you're supposed to tip it every time the name Jesus Christ is mentioned. And at my wedding, my friend Daniel preached. And there were probably, oh, I don't know, at least five or six priests who had their Berettas on. And Daniel must have said Jesus Christ about 40 times in his sermon. So he just kept seeing this like, <laughs> it was great. This is called a cope, um, and it is, it is kind of like a preaching cape, more or less. It's the height of Roman fashion. Uh, this one, in particular, reminds me of the sound of music. You know the part where the kids don't have any clothes to play in, so they take the drapes? That, that's You'll have to take a look, a closer look at some point, but that's what these remind me of. But I still love them. They're great. And it was free, too, which makes it even better, right? God, it's good to be here. It's good to be here with all of you. A little emotional. Um, so since it's been, you know, two years since we've really been able to do this in person, I was kind of hoping we can do it again. Uh... So, hallelujah, Christ is risen! The Lord is risen indeed. Hallelujah. I've been waiting so long to hear people say those words in person. Gosh, it feels good. It's been a year, hasn't it? It's been a year. We've lost so much. Many of us have lost friends and loved ones. A very good friend of mine from college died from the coronavirus. For a time, we lost the ability to meet in person. Our churches were never closed because you are the church, but our doors were, and that was hard. We lost being able to celebrate Easter with our friends and our loved ones last year. And while some of us are here today, well, we're still missing some of those who would normally be here with us, but aren't able to join us in person just yet. It's been a hard, hard year. And we're not even really quite out of the woods yet. But in the words of the great poet, prophet, and sage, Pat McDonald, we can see light at the end of the tunnel, and it's not a train. <laughs> and this, all of this, all of this is why I believe that now, more than ever, we need to look to the empty tomb and be reminded of our greatest hope. You see, in our gospel lesson today, we find Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James and Salome, on their way to the tomb to anoint Jesus' body with spices. But when they arrive at their destination, well, they see a number of things that were, well, unexpected. 2020 was definitely a year, I think, that no one expected. Did anyone else have a roaring 20s New Year's party? We did. 2020 was supposed to be all these wonderful things. There are all these things that were kind of lining up. Uh, I remember somebody joked that uh, Cinco de Mayo fell on Taco Tuesday. You know, and, and things like that. And it was this, this, it was just supposed to be so wonderful and, and it wasn't. It was the opposite of that. Well, things weren't wonderful when Mary and company showed up at the tomb. But things were also unexpected. You see, first of all, the stone from the tomb had been rolled away already. They'd been talking about it on the way there. Who are we going to get to roll the stone away for us? 
Secondly, when they went inside, well, Jesus wasn't there, which was shocking. Instead, our Gospel writer reports that there was a young man dressed in a white robe, and if that wasn't shocking enough, the young man informs Mary and her cohort that Jesus had been raised from the dead. Imagine. This is not something you hear every day. And finally, the young man dressed in the white robe adds that they should not be alarmed. Don't be alarmed, really. And that they should go and tell the other disciples, no, yeah, Peter too. A lot of good that did, fella. Because our gospel writer reports that the three women were not only alarmed, they were terrified. And rightly so. It also says, and this is kind of interesting, it says they didn't say a word to anyone, and then in the next thing it says, well, except for... <laughs> so yeah, of course, they had to say something to someone, or else we wouldn't be here. Think about that for a second. Don't let anyone ever tell you that women shouldn't be pastors and priests or preach. Because if it wasn't for women preaching, we would not be here today. I mean, they told somebody, right? Because we're here. Uh, but if you think about it, they had every right to be terrified. Their day was not going according to plan. The stone had been rolled away. That wasn't according to plan. Jesus is, but that was probably a blessing in a way. They're like, oh, good. Uh, but Jesus' body wasn't there, not according to plan. You see, that first Easter morning changed everything. And because of that first Easter morning, because of the resurrection of Jesus Christ and God's incredible gift of life for his people, we, with those first three women, are not only witnesses to resurrection and to new life, but we are participants in resurrection and in new life. You see, God has this funny habit of speaking life into things that have no business living. Sometimes, well, that looks like the creation of an entire world as we read in Genesis 1. Whatever that really looked like. Sometimes, well, it's a pile of dirt. You can call it Adam or Ken or Bob or Jane. On that first Easter morning, God breathed and spoke new life into the crucified body of his son. And when that happened, when that happened, God also breathed new life into our very souls. You see, that is resurrection. And resurrection happens, you see, in the bleakest of moments. Resurrection happens when it feels like there's no hope to be had. I don't know about you all, and I won't speak for you, but I can honestly say there were definitely some days over the last year where I didn't have a whole lot of hope. I've got a two-year-old at home. He was one at the time, but uh, I remember multiple times sitting at uh, kind of our breakfast bar at night after my wife went to bed, and if he was sleeping, which if you've ever had a one- or two-year-old, you know that doesn't happen a whole lot, but uh, sitting there and just crying because I was so worried about what might happen. But yet, if Jesus taught us anything, it's that places like that, places where you're in despair, where it feels like there's nothing you can do. Those are the places where we find resurrection and salvation. Because when we come to a place like that, a place where you feel like you've just got nothing left to give, a place where it seems like there's just no reason to even hope that you should just give up, 
That's where resurrection happens because that is the exact place where resurrection is needed the most. And so we continue to hope. As Christians, we continue to hope in a new heaven and a new earth. We continue to hope in a new world that's shaped by forgiveness and grace and mercy and the love of God. A world of unlimited possibilities. In all of this, because the resurrection of Jesus Christ has declared that where there is despair, God bursts forth with hope. The resurrection of Jesus Christ has declared to the world that just when it seems like evil and sorrow and death appear to have won, well, this crack of light happens on the horizon. A crack of light breaks through and a new day dawns with all of the promises of peace and of joy and of hope and of grace and of mercy and forgiveness and redemption and love and life, new and unending life. That is what Easter is all about. And because of each morning, or Easter morning, each and every day, well, we have the power to choose new life. Yes, each and every day we can choose to show others just what the resurrection and the amazing love of Jesus Christ looks like. Each and every day we can choose to say yes to Jesus and yes to resurrection and yes to love and yes to life. And the way that we say yes, you might be wondering, how do we say yes? Well, that's easy. The way that we say yes is by embodying the love of Jesus to all people. And I'd like to tell you what that looks like. Some of this may sound a little familiar. The love of Jesus is always patient and always kind. It is not envious or self-seeking. The love of Jesus does not hurt or exploit other people. The love of Jesus respects the dignity of every human being and does not shun people for what we perceive to be their sins. The love of Jesus bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. The love of Jesus knows no bounds and it knows no borders. The love of Jesus does not play favorites. The love of Jesus tells us that the first will be last and the last will be first. The love of Jesus calls us to turn the other cheek, to give to those who are in need, to welcome the stranger and the widow and the orphan and the refugee. The love of Jesus calls for us to provide for people and advocate for people and sacrifice for people and perhaps even die as we show the world what the liberating love of Jesus Christ looks like. And finally, finally, the love of Jesus. The love of Jesus always, always, always reaches into the bleakest of situations in this world and finds a way to practice resurrection and speak 
forth new and everlasting life into hopeless situations. Because, you see, that is what we are called to do as Christians. That is what the love of God and love of neighbor looks like. That is the love of Jesus Christ that you and I are called to choose. So my prayer for you today, my prayer for all of us, this glorious Easter morning. My prayer is that we will experience Easter morning. That we'll experience and practice resurrection. My prayer for us is that we will love God with our hearts and our minds and our souls and our strength and that we'll selflessly love all of our neighbors. Every last one. No exceptions. My prayer for us is that we will speak love and life into this world. Because you know, the power of Easter and the love of Jesus, they're unstoppable. Not even death in the grave could contain the love of Jesus. You see, the love of Jesus has been changing and transforming and reshaping and rearranging this world for 2,000 years. And nothing, nothing, nothing in heaven or on earth or under the earth can change that. Nothing, not fire or tornadoes, no plague or hurricane or earthquake, not even a typhoon or a flood or a volcanic eruption, no act of hate or violence or oppression or war, and definitely, definitely no pandemic or virus will ever, ever stop the love of Jesus Christ. Nothing, not even death. Dear church, some 2,000 years ago, Jesus Christ, through the power of resurrection, brought new and unending life into this world. And each and every moment of each and every day, he is calling each and every one of us to go out from our four walls and do the exact same thing. So today, today, and the next day, and the day after that, and the day after that, and the day after that, Look for people and places where God has given you the resources and the power to usher in resurrection and new life. Be the hands and feet of Jesus. Because it's our job now to show this world just exactly what resurrection looks like. And just because I have the microphone, I want to do this one more time. Hallelujah! Christ is risen! The Lord is risen Amen. Amen. Please stand with me as you are able, 
as we renew our baptismal vows found on page 292 in your Book of Common Prayer. Page 292. Do you reaffirm your renunciation of evil and renew your commitment to Jesus Christ? I do. do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father. Do you believe in Jesus Christ the Son of God? God the Holy Spirit. I Will you continue in the apostles' teaching and fellowship, in the breaking of bread and in the prayers? Will you persevere in resisting evil? And whenever you fall into sin, repent and return to the Lord. Will you proclaim by word and example the good news of God in Christ? Will you seek and serve Christ in all persons, loving your neighbor as yourself? Will you strive for justice and peace among all people and respect the dignity of every human being? May Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us new birth by water and the Holy Spirit, and bestowed upon us the forgiveness of sins, keep us in eternal life by his grace in Christ Jesus our Lord. The prayers of the people, Form 3. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church, that we all may be one. Grant that every member of the Church may truly and humbly serve you, that your name may be glorified by all people. We pray for Michael, our presiding bishop, Kevin, our bishop, Ken, our rector, and all other bishops, priests, and deacons, that they may be faithful ministers of your words and sacraments. We pray for Joe, our president, John, our governor, and all those who govern and hold authority in the nations of the earth, that there may be justice and peace on the earth. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake, that our works might find favor in your sight. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief, trouble, or sickness, that they may be delivered from their distress. We especially pray <clears throat> for Arlene Carpenter, John Materis, Gail Calhoun, Leon Slocum, Nancy Clapp, Bruce Clinton, Sister Rosie, Lily Walker, David Jefferson, Maria Laval, Peggy Buchanan, I'm sorry, Peggy Bachman, 
You can pray for Peggy Buchanan as well. Barb and Jerry Connell, Gehanna, Matthew, Idella Ludwig, Dave Greenwood, John Martin, Bruce and Courtney Porstman, Cammie Franz, Robert Carlton, June Schneckenberger, Robin Buckley, Anne Friel, Kathy Scarborough, Dave and Mary Anger, Betty Demier, I think that's Betty Demler, I beg your pardon, Robert O'Neill, Tyler, Reed, Briley, and the families of those who have died from the coronavirus and any others whom we now name either silently or aloud. Give to the departed eternal rest. Let light perpetual shine upon them. We especially pray for Wendy Demler and all those who have died from the coronavirus and any others whom we now name either silently or aloud. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. May we also come to share in your heavenly kingdom. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. From our cycle of prayer for the Episcopal Church in Delaware, we, pay, we pray for the Reverend Marianne S. L., pastor of St. Luke's Church, Seaford. We pray for those in our military who serve our country, both at home and abroad. We also pray for their families. O oh Lord, our God, accept the fervent prayers of your people. In the multitude of your mercies, look with compassion upon us and all who turn to you for help. For you are gracious, O oh lover of souls. And to you we give glory, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. And may the peace of the Lord be always with you. y'all here? Is that okay? Or should I say use? You know, where I'm from, we say yins. Um, but uh, I, I tried dropping that uh, a while back. Uh, I had a roommate and I was leaving it was when I was living in Texas. And uh, I said, all right, I'll see you later. I'm going out. He said, where? I said, I'm going out. Out? I said, oh my gosh, I can hear my accent. So after that, I tried to kind of drop the Pittsburgh accent, if you know what the Pittsburgh accent kind of sounds like. So. And that, then I picked up y'all when I was in Virginia. So anyway, hey y'all. Um, just a couple of quick announcements. First of all, again, thank you, thank you, thank you so much for being a part of our Easter service today. This is the most joyful thing I have been a part of in a long, long time, and it's wonderful. Um, so thank you for being a part of that and making that happen. Um, Upcoming, we've got a, uh, a book study or book club coming up. Uh, it'll be over Zoom. And uh, the book is called uh, uh, Hitchhiking with Drunken Nuns. And uh, we just got it uh, uh, the other day. I got a case of books from England. They did a special pressing for us. I'm really excited. I 
did an interview with the author that I'll be posting on Facebook and on our YouTube soon. And uh, I've got a couple extra books, uh, just in case anybody wanted to kind of be a, a late joiner. I figured I'd just order two or three extra just in case. So if you haven't signed up, it's not too late. Uh, also, we're going to be starting a, uh, a Tuesday evening Bible study, and originally, I was going to uh, do it on uh, the Gospel of Mark. I'm just going to start Mark and go from there, because uh, I'm already doing a Bible study on Mark, and I thought, well, this should be good, less work, you know, I've already done the work for it. And uh, like so many other things, I changed my mind and created more work for myself. But I thought we would do the Bible study on the book of Revelation, because, like, that's really fun, right? Like, everybody wants to do a Bible study on the book of Revelation. So that's what we'll do. That's how we'll start that out. And that'll be on Tuesdays over Zoom. Uh, the exact dates are in your bulletin, and I think the time is going to be 7, if I remember correctly. Uh, don't quote me, though. Look in your bulletin. Um, are there any other announcements that I'm missing? Anybody? Going once? Going twice? Sold to nobody. Okay. <clears throat> so, it occurred to me this morning during announcements that uh, you know, we weren't in church for a long time. So has anyone had a birthday in the last year? <laughs> Raise your hand if you've had a birthday in the last year. Okay. So let's turn to page 830, and we're going to say the birthday prayer for everybody. We'll do prayer 50, because that's the, that's the one without the these and thous and thines. That, that's strictly for 8 a.m.ers, if you don't know. The 8 o'clockers told me they would ground me if I didn't do this, so. Okay. Well, let us pray. O oh God, our times are in your hand. Look with favor, we pray, on your servants as we begin another year. Grant that we may grow in wisdom and grace and strengthen our trust in your goodness all the days of our lives. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And also, are there any married couples here today? We've got a, a few. Have you had a wedding anniversary in the last year? If you have, and you're comfortable doing this, you don't have to, please stand up where you are. Usually I'd have you come forward. And kind of hard here. Which is, which, what's the bride side and the groom side here? Does anyone know? Is this the bride side? This would be the bride side. But I'm not going to have you move, but normally maybe I'd think about it. But on the top of page 431... I'd like to say a prayer for those who have had anniversaries. And if you would face each other, maybe hold a hand or something. You know. Please pray with me. Oh God, you have so consecrated the covenant of marriage that in it is represented the spiritual unity between Christ and his church. Send therefore your blessing upon these your servants that they may so love, honor, and cherish each other in faithfulness and patience, in wisdom and true godliness, that their home may be a haven of blessing and peace through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may kiss the bride. Brides. So, thank you, yay. All right. Well, walk in love as Christ loved us and gave for us himself an offering and sacrifice to God.
Our service continues with Eucharistic Prayer D, found on page 372 in your Book of Common Prayer. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right to glorify you, Father, and to give you thanks, for you alone are God, living and true, dwelling in light inaccessible from before time and forever. Fountain of life and source of all goodness, you made all things and filled them with your blessing. You created them to rejoice in the splendor of your radiance. Countless throngs of angels stand before you to serve you night and day. And beholding the glory of your presence, they offer you unceasing praise. Joining with them and giving voice to every creature under heaven, we acclaim you and glorify your name as we say, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We acclaim you, Holy Lord, glorious in power. Your mighty works reveal your wisdom and love. You formed us in your own image, giving the whole world into our care, so that, in obedience to you, our Creator, we might rule and serve all your creatures. When our disobedience took us far from you, you did not abandon us to the power of death. In your mercy, you came to our help, so that in seeking you, we might find you. Again and again, you called us into covenant with you, and through the prophets, you taught us to hope for salvation. Father, you love the world so much that in the fullness of time, you sent your only Son to be our Savior. Incarnate by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, he lived as one of us, yet without sin. To the poor, he proclaimed the good news of salvation. To prisoners, freedom. To the sorrowful, joy. To fulfill your purpose, he gave himself up to death, and rising from the grave, destroyed death, and made the whole creation new. And that we might live no longer for ourselves, but for him who died and rose for us, he sent the Holy Spirit, his own first gift for those who believe, to complete his work in the world, and to bring to fulfillment the sanctification of all. When the hour had come for him to be glorified you, his heavenly Father, having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. At supper with them he took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Father, we now celebrate this memorial of our redemption, recalling Christ's death and his descent among the dead, proclaiming his resurrection and ascension to your right hand, awaiting his coming in glory, and offering to you from the gifts you have given us this bread and this cup. We praise you and we bless you. We praise you, we bless you. 
We give thanks to you, and we pray to you, Lord our God. Lord, we pray that in your goodness and mercy, your Holy Spirit may descend upon us and upon these gifts, sanctifying them and showing them to be the holy gifts for your holy people, the bread of life and the cup of salvation, the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Grant that all who share this bread and cup may become one body and one spirit, a living sacrifice in Christ to the praise of your name. Remember, Lord, your one holy Catholic and apostolic church, redeemed by the blood of your Christ. Reveal its unity, guard its faith, and preserve it in peace. And grant that we may find our inheritance with the Blessed Virgin Mary, with patriarchs, prophets, apostles, and martyrs, with St. Barnabas and all the saints who have found favor with you in ages past. We praise you in union with them and give you glory through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, all honor and glory are yours, Almighty God and Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit forever and ever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia! Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed for us. These are the gifts of God for you, the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith and with thanksgiving.
Our service continues on page 366 in your Book of Common Prayer. Please stand as you are able. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and your minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. So Easter people, go out into the world and show people what resurrection looks like. Let us go forth rejoicing in the power of the Spirit. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! <laughs> <laughs>